Good evening everyone. Connor 500, professional gambler, 11pm on the very last day of March. We're going into April now and what a terrible March it has been statistic wise. I'm talking a bit quietly because I'm just in a hotel room and everybody's trying probably to sleep. Um, it's been a terrible, terrible month. I've got it as minus 26% for the month, which takes us as a prop to a profit of 7.6% for the year. So it is all added up. I'm going to put it in the description box. Um, I'm going to put each day in the description box. I haven't got it ready yet. I had a sleep this afternoon and I went out to get a Chinese, came back and ate that. And then I just added up, you know, the total ROI for the month, which is the most important statistic, the ROI. But there is benefits to doing a channel as free. And I don't, uh, and I do understand that because when you do a channel as free, it does give you a lot more freedom and protection from, from what you would get if you charge. But it still is honestly horrific when you have it, when you have a bad run. And honestly, any, any honest YouTuber, which, would be, which is most of them, it is most of them, you know, uh, it, it, you know, I may seem sometimes like I, I massively dislike everyone, but I genuinely don't. But the point I'm trying to make is, I, as a YouTuber, it is much, much worse to have a bad month on here, even if you don't physically lose money or much money, than it is to have a, a bad run in real life. Because the pressure, the pressure is 20 times as much on YouTube, just because of the sheer amount of people watching. It really is. So maybe this month is my time to have a bad month. And, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. This is a rambling video. And the reason that it's a free channel is can also afford me to do these rambling videos. I've never tried to hide anything from you. I've never misled you. I left Labbrooks in early um, 2014. And I was full time from then until now, apart from the two occasions in which I told you about. And I also was an extra in a Thai film once in Marlow. Because um, my friend was doing it. He was like, do you want to come along as an extra? You can be in a film. It's a, it's a Thai premiere. And I was like, yeah, OK, I would love to. And I got there to, because for this Thai film. And originally I was just an extra. But they, they moved me up to be a person dating one of the Thai sisters at the wedding. I can't remember the film's name now, but I... Um, the film is called How I Yay To Do. How is, the film's How Is Yay To Do. And I was in the film, but, um, but it's spelt in the Thai language. Anyway, that's the only work I've done. Regarding the channel, I'll answer, I can answer... Every question's valid. Let me just say this. Every question's massively valid. Um, and it's understandable not to know if I've been asked it a hundred times before. It's understandable. Because if I joined a new channel, I would, you know, I would ask these questions as well. Regarding the one, regarding the question about why don't I show my slips, which is an ultra valid question, and which is the number one question I'm asked. That I answered that as much as I really could in the Shelton and Recap video. So I don't want to use the time too much in this video for that. There's another question today regarding why do I pick two, so many bad each way races. If I could sum this up in three words, if I could just use three words to sum up why I stick to these particular races, those three words would be value. It's because value doesn't hold. And the more serious punters among us will understand this. Is it's, it's incredibly difficult to find selections in which the value is going to hold consistently from the upload time until the until the off and we're talking consistently here and and this and i'm more posing this as as like a as like a logical what's the right word not conundrum not conundrum but it's like a logical fact is that value does not hold um 
and I hope you understand what I mean by that. A lot of you will, and a lot of you won't. Why does the value hold on the ones I'm, I'm showing here? It's because you've got a consistent gap between the, the real place value and what you're getting by what the bookies are setting. Because the bookies are forced to pay one-fifth of the odds, which leads you to a gap in the market for that which enables me to be able to do this on a YouTube. Um, and also best odds guaranteed which is, is a huge, is a huge part of this. Just trying to think how to work. I see I haven't written anything down in the whole year that I've done this. I've never wrote anything down once except on the bit of paper and those who were here in the early days know that that bit of paper used to just be a back of a receipt and things like that um, but yeah so it's different with handicaps and bad each ways a lot of people would ask and they would say you can tell us a minimum price T sim simply tell us a minimum price you could say back it at six to one or above or something like this but then that would assume one would know all of the information that would that would be assuming that one would be privy to all of the information possible about this selection which is which would not be possible because of course me nor anyone else really is privy all of the time to any information because it would be very simple for me to say back at six to one or above But to put it plainly, if the exchange starts gambling this into three to one, and I've said back it at six to one or above, and the exchange has gambled that into threes, four to one, I would be taking fours. Obviously, you couldn't get fours. You wouldn't be able to get fours. I'm just saying as a hypothetical, I would take fours. If the exchange has gambled this into threes, and it's, and it, and it's at the off a consistent three to one, I would, I would take the fours, which would be different to if I'd have earlier on said six to one if you see what I mean I've just got to say when this video goes I'm just going to I'm just going to leave it at that so I'm literally going to just keep talking until the video's gone um so yeah there's a lot of constraints on a YouTube there really is because it's completely different to telling someone because if somebody asks you if somebody asks you for a bet and you give them that bet, you haven't really got to worry much about five hours later and things like that. Um, somebody asked earlier as well, and it's understandable during such a bad period. Somebody asked, do I just pick horses at random um, in races in which there's an odds on favourite? No, I don't. I don't pick horses at random, but it's not quite as simple as picking the best value you possibly can, because there's a lot more at play in this. Um, I saw a really good thread about this subject, actually, because there's a load of gamblers playing a tournament. Um, there's a load of gamblers playing a tournament. I'm going to talk really quietly because I don't want to annoy everyone, but I hope you can hear me. I don't want to talk so quietly that no one can hear me. Anyway, they're playing this tournament and they're having to settle at SP. And because they're having to settle at SP, it changes the whole game. And it changes how you would play the game. There's a lot to take into account when on a static channel that there's not really too much to compare it to. There's not really too much to compare with that. Value just doesn't hold. I was thinking last night, you know, after I'd mentioned on here, that I mentioned on the golf video, that I went to Minsk and I mentioned when I went to Serbia. I've been all of those countries because I, I spent a lot of time in Latvia. I spent a lot of time in Lithuania involuntarily yeah. because I got, I got sent there. Moldova, I spent a total of nine months. 
I took two professional gamblers to Moldova. I just kept taking people to Moldova. And there's a big situation going on, isn't there, at the minute with the war, which is a terrible situation. Um, and if you ask my honest standpoint, my honest standpoint on this, is my honest standpoint is that I don't know, and I'm the wrong person to ask. Okay, if you ask me about 16 runner handicaps, or bad each ways, or something like that, I can answer you. But do I have much diplomatic training, or do I know much about politics in Eastern Europe? No, I don't. I don't watch news. I don't watch the news. I don't, wa I don't watch much television. Um, no, I haven't for some time. The way I could phrase it is this. I spent a lot of time in... I'm just trying to see the reflection in my glasses. It's me. Can you see that? I spent a lot of time in Belarus, and I spent a lot of time in other countries. And I would say the people that I met and I, and, and I spent time with were equally as good people. Um, what I'm trying to say here is, um, with the people that I've met across my time, I... Hmm. I just don't know what's going on, but all I know is that the, the people, the, the normal people, and the nice people are everywhere. You will get a nice person of every background. You really will. So that's my opinion on the on the Russian Ukrainian war. <laughs> is it quite simply? I don't know. But I've met people on both sides of this conflict, and I found them to be lovely people. I deed polled my name in mid 2020. I deed polled my first name, and there's not a lot of people who have done that. But it was done for genuine reasons. I because I I think if. I changed it to the name I was originally given at birth because my mum gave me the name Connor when I was born and it was changed a little while after by my father. So I went back to my original name um, that I was given at birth and that's it, quite as simple as that. Surname I kept as my mother's surname. So really I, de I depolled my name to the first name that my mother gave me and the surname that is hers. And there'll be a lot of people here watching this who will know this. Because there'll be people watching.